Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this video we will be coming up with the formula for an ellipse, a general equation. We already did this with a circle. Uh, we started that definition by defining a circle as a locus of points. The circle was made up of a single fixed point and the locus of points was all of the points that were a set distance from the center. The ellipse is similar. It is also a locus of points. Uh, instead of a single fixed point, we start with two points that are fixed called foci. In the diagram here, we can see F1 and F2. That is focus 1 and focus 2 together. They are the foci. Every point on this ellipse, ellipse is going to have something in common. And we can take a look at what uh, all these points have in common by looking at the numbers going by, going up and down at the top. Let's pick this point right here, for instance. So the blue segment is given, the distance of the blue, the length of the blue segment is given at the top. It is 1.725, that is the, the distance from P to F1. Uh, the length of the red segment is the distance from P to F2. If we add those together, we get six. If I go to another point, Again, I have a distance, I have two different distances, one to the first focus, one to the second focus, but if I add those uh, lengths together, I again get six. No matter where I go in this circle, the sums of the two lengths should be six. If I increase that six number to 7.160, that just increases the size of the ellipse because both red and blue will have to be larger to compensate. If I make it smaller, clearly the smaller ellipse. So let's take a look at the equation that will describe this locus of points. We start with a general diagram of an ellipse, and we are going to center this diagram at the origin 0, 0. This is strictly for convenience. We've labeled some of the other points, and we've given them, uh, we've given the coordinates variables. We've assigned variables to the different coordinates. The foci are defined as C0 and negative C0. There they are. There's focus 2 and focus 1. And then we've also defined what are called the vertices of the ellipse. So here are a couple of vertices. These are the points that make the endpoints of the major axis and the minor axis. In this problem here, in this diagram rather, that is the major axis, and the green one going up and down is the minor axis. And we're always going to associate A with the major axis and B with the minor axis. Using these definitions, we can define the length of each of these axes. The length of the major axis, which is the black one, is 2a. The length of major axis is 2a. From here to the point a0, you don't have to use the distance formula to figure out that that length is a. Therefore, all the way across is 2a. That's kind of why we centered this thing right in the middle. That was just for convenience. The length of the minor axis, then, is 2b. Length of minor axis. Okay, now let's take a look at the formula so far for the ellipse. We have in our formula um, a couple of variables. We have c. c uh, has to do with the focus, with the foci. Uh, we have xy. xy represents any point on the ellipse. And then we have this constant for now, if we wanted to, let's just call it a constant z. So, so far we have a formula for the ellipse in terms of c and z. Our goal is going to be to provide a formula only in terms of a and b, which are the endpoints of the axes. Uh, the way we're going to do this is with uh, some trickery. Uh, this diagram is set up for this random point x, y. The whole point of the definition of a locus of points is that no matter where x, y is, this 
definition is going to be uh, the same. I mean, the result is going to be the same. We're going to have two different lengths, and together the lengths are going to be some number, and no matter where I am, that number is going to be the same. Even if it's that point, even if it's this point down here, what we're going to find in the diagram is even if it's one of the endpoints of one of the axes. Um, we're going to choose that point just for a matter of convenience. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, if we choose this point right here, the point A0, as our point P on the ellipse, then we can draw some conclusions that will help us derive the formula. First, let's see how far it is from the first focus. The length from the first focus to the point down here at A0 is that red segment. That red segment goes along the x-axis from negative C0 all the way to A0. The distance from the other focus is just this little blue guy right here. That little blue guy is the distance from C0 to A0 which it just so happens is equal to the distance from negative A0 to negative C0. Those lengths are the same. Together then, if you were just to ignore this, together the length, the sum of these two lengths is 2A. That is the major axis. So instead of saying that the, uh, and the result of this sum is Z or some constant, now we can actually say 2A. And this is going to be true for any point. If it's true for that point on the endpoint, then it has to be true for this point up here also. Red plus blue, no matter where we, we are, is going to be equal to 2A. So that's nice. We got rid of Z. Now we have a formula in terms of A and C. Our goal now is to get B worked into there somehow. The way we're going to do that is by picking the other endpoint, the other vertex, as our, our arbitrary choice for P. So let's take a look at the next diagram because it has a nice picture here. Boom. So now we have the point up there. So we already know that the uh, sum of the two lengths must be 2a. So if I took this red guy right here, which is the length from the first focus, and I added this blue guy right here, I know that the sum of those has to be 2a. That's the length of the major axis. Okay, well, if both of them together are 2a, we happen to have chosen the spot where these two lengths are equal. If together they are 2a, and individually it's just a. The length from the top vertex to the focus is a. And not only that, but it makes a nice right triangle with the b and the c. This leads us to the conclusion that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. Since together they make the sides of a right triangle, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem uh, to make this definition. Now a was just the uh, a is just the length from the center here all the way down the major axis. So this red segment right here is a. No matter what type of ellipse you have, the length from the center to the endpoint of the major axis is a. So every ellipse will have this characteristic that the minor axis, half of the minor axis squared, plus the length from the middle to the focus squared, is going to equal the half of the length of the major axis squared. It's not set up like a triangle um, when you just have a regular ellipse, but it does um, have the characteristics of a right triangle. Now that we know that the sum of the two lengths from any point to the two foci is 2a, and now that we know that we have this relationship between a, b, and c, we can continue to come up with a formula for this ellipse in terms of just a and b. Now we are not going to go through this step by step because there's just a ton of algebra. I'm just going to scroll through it 
It involves lots of like squaring both sides. There's a lot of substitution. Uh, you're more than welcome to pause this video and work through the steps. I believe there's also a uh, proof for this in the textbook. I think the textbook walks you through the same series of steps. Um, got some exclamation points in here. As you can see, it's quite a process, and explaining each step along the way would be multiple 15-minute videos. Um, but it all is um, predicated on the fact that a squared equals b squared plus c squared, and that the sum of the two lengths is 2a. After lots of rearranging, we get to a formula. Here it is. Ta -da! That is the formula of an ellipse, where a is half the length of the major axis and B is half the length of the minor axis. This equation will always be set up to equal 1. It's just the, the way it is. You could rearrange things so it wasn't necessarily equal to 1 just like you can rearrange a linear equation so it's not doesn't look like y equals mx plus b but this is considered the standard most basic form of an ellipse and of course xy is any point on the ellipse okay there's just one well, let's take a look at a general diagram of this. Uh, actually, two general diagrams. So far, all of the ellipses we've um, used as examples have been situated horizontally, where the, um, the foci are kind of left and right of each other. But there are no rules anywhere that say you can't have a, an ellipse that's situated vertically instead, where the foci are situated up and down. In both of these situations, the major axis, which I'll do in red, is 2a. In that one, it's 2a. This is the point a0, and the distance from here to here is a, so the whole major axis is 2a. Same thing goes vertically. We just put, we use the letter a um, in terms of a y coordinate instead of an x-coordinate. So up here is 0a instead of a0. And the length of the major axis all the way is still going to be 2a. The minor axis is going to be associated with b. Here the minor axis is vertical, so b is associated with the y value. Here the minor axis is horizontal, so the b is associated with the x-coordinate. The formulas for a horizontal and vertical ellipse are very slightly different, um, but it's not too bad. In the horizontal ellipse over here, hello, in the horizontal ellipse, the A goes along the x-axis. The A is the x-coordinate, and in the formula, the A is associated with the x part of the formula. It's x squared over a squared. In the vertical ellipse, uh, the major axis runs vertically and is associated with the y-coordinate. So the a and the y are placed together in the formula. The rest of the formula is the same. Before we completely wrap things up, we should we just have to remember uh, that c does play a role. The, the foci were the basis of the definition of the ellipse. So even if c doesn't show up in the formula, it's going to be important to remember the relationship between A, B, and C. A is this length, B is this length, and C is the length to the focus. And the relationship between the two is that this red one, this lo longest one, is identical to the length that connects the endpoints of blue and green. They make a triangle together. So let's not forget that b squared plus c squared is equal to a squared. This is going to be true in both the horizontal and vertical ellipse. Over and out. That's all for now. Have a wonderful day.